Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ma'am, uh, my topic was the reference of the golden buff by Fraser. So I would like to start, first of all, I would like to start, discuss the main point, the main thing that how these both novel and poem are linked with each other. Like uh, starting from Fraser that whatever, uh, what the thing Fraser explains. That Fraser explains to us how all the culture and religions are similar and share the same concept and purpose. On the other side, Eliot takes this knowledge and take it a step further by incorporating various religions, religion and belief system and allowing them to connect to each other with a common purpose. So, I would like to give uh, um, some lines, I would like to explain some lines from the novel, novel which connects with the poem, The Wasteland. Like uh, I took some lines from the novel on page 116. The novel Golden Buff on page 116, Fraser discusses the annual celebration of death of Adams by Bibles, an ancient Phoenician town in what is now Lebanon. This was celebrated in spring. Like the lines are, the red earth dawned the mountains by the rain, tingles the water of the river, and even the sea for a great way with a blood red, and the crimson stain was believed to be the blood of Evans annually wounded to death by bear of Mount Lebanon. So on the other side, how it connects with the poem Wasteland and how Eliot was interested to this poem. Like we see, thus in combination of human nature and spiritual pattern of death and rebirth from the opening lines of the Wasteland. Like April is the curious month breeding lilacs out of the death land mixing memory and desires string dull roots with spring rain winter kept a warm covering earth in forgetful snow feeding a little life with dried tribes tubes so here we can say that the golden buff is the important work in the development of t.s Eliot, the waste land so we can say that we can say that the golden buff is connected with the waste land. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. My name is Ushna Tariq, and the topic you have given me is The Golden Bow by uh, James Fraser. This book is actually a compare and contrast of scientific and religious thought, which covers the events of fertility rates and human sacrifice being compared both religiously and scientifically. The major event that, um, uh, that it covers uh, is the human sacrifice. And that is a weight of appreciation to gods, but uh, scientifically telling us someone without questioning it remote uh, promote some survival of the fittest. So um, the overall theory he uh, Fraser discusses is the human race has evolved from believing in magic, going to religious belief, and now in transition to scientific thoughts. Both culturally, uh, all cultures. Uh, all cultures in both scientific and religious manner. So the uh, the actually um, this uh, whole book um, in, uh, was inspired by um, was inspired by a renowned painter, uh, J M W Turner. He was a painter and a thinker, and he painted a picture called Golden Bow. And this painting inspired many of the uh, ideas and thoughts in Fraser's work. Uh, uh, the title of the two masterpieces in this book are the same, but the painting was of a tree in a grove growing day and night. And Fraser says it reminded him of uh, religious ceremonies in Nemi, uh, Italy. Uh, what the painting looked like to him and uh, uh, um, both uh, religion and uh, science are being discussed in this uh, whole book so religion is one of the main ideas in his book and uh, it um, evolves throughout human history starting with the explanation of magic people needed something to figure out what was going on in their world so they turned to religion and uh, religious successor, religion's successor is a science, making way for a whole new era of understanding the world that is in this book. 
so uh, another thing that was more majorly uh, uh, pointing was science scientific uh, ma scientific manners science uh, in this was uh, right that um, Fraser says that the um, science is the newest step in the human explanatory thought process we have reached this conclusion that today as we begin to explain more and more things that seem unexplainable without um, science so he says that science is very much evident and necessary since uh, the main idea of this book is that science and religion are similar in certain ways so science is a thought process that our species has developed and will continue to develop for years and years and uh, what else Actually, uh, the compare and contrast of this religion and science, they actually are both opposite ends of the spectrum where that uh, Fraser is explaining. So um, the human mind, the actually um, origin of this, uh, these two things, the human mind, he wants to, he says that he wants to spread the idea that both are just uh, excuses or justifications for what we cannot explain. Uh, uh, in this uh, book, he uh, he states the idea of, of painting. Uh, similarity to uh, similarity seems to be an important thing as the book wants to portray the idea that many of the thoughts in our minds are similar in origin and explanation. And uh, and uh, what else? The actually uh, th though they both are uh, have they both have the same origin, the human mind and from the human mind the religion and the science, but they actually both are different, in a way that uh, they have different importance in our lives, and explain um, like the, how they both have. Uh, um, shaped our beliefs and uh, how uh, how they have made our uh, thoughts different in both the perspectives so things uh, uh, fraser is actually overall uh, he's explaining about uh, how things work and um, how the uh, how it is essential for the evolution of the species <coughs> sorry um this is all what i understood so actually ma'am i wasn't able to uh, find the whole book or download it because uh, i was not able to get the proper connection network was very uh, much busy you can say so i am sorry uh, if i if something miss if something i have missed but this is all what i got thank you assalamu alaikum ma'am uh, the title that is assigned to me is um the golden bow in james francis so it is actually the title that is referred to dying of fertility quotes in james francis golden bow uh, basically it's a thesis about uh, sacrifice of a sacred king who is the incarnation of a dying and reviving a uh, reviving god who went under a mystic marriage to a goddess of earth he died at the harvest and uh, was reincarnated in the spring. So Frenzik claims that this legend of rebirth is central to almost uh, all of the world's mythologies. So when we talk about that, uh, Frenzik claims that this legend uh, of rebirth is central to almost all of the world's mythologies. So we can relate this with the uh, title of the poem the wasteland that it talks about the modern man who is spiritually dead uh, die and um, still he needs something like um, he uh, can get he can give birth to his uh, deadly spirits and he can again re give rebirth or regenerate them i think that is uh, that's all which i have got from this title thank you so much Assalamu alaikum ma'am. My name is Asma Anwar. 
um, and I have been assigned the task to talk about Sir James George Fraser's uh, work named as uh, The Golden Bough. So starting off with a little bit introduction of Sir James, he was a Scottish anthropologist. His famous works include Folklore in the Old Testament and of course The Golden Bough, which basically points out the similarities among magical and religious beliefs all around the globe. Um, the Golden Bough talks about the general development of the modes of thought from the magical uh, perspective to the religious perspective and then of course he talks about science as well he makes a distinction between magic and religion by stating that magic is an attempt to control the events by technical acts and actions and uh, really religion is uh, an appeal for help to spiritual beings about the golden bow the title is uh, a, refer a reference to a sacred mythological plant that was believed to have a healing power and about the background and the overall plot or summary of the uh, of this book um, uh, sir james was intrigued by the ancient italian tale of king of the wood and there was a king who was in actuality a priest whose task was to protect nemi which is a grove of trees surrounding a sacred lake uh, the lake is dedicated to the roman goddess diana the king of wood he was called as the king of wood but he was not actually or particularly a priest rather he was a succession of them who was just called upon to fulfill the role and then um, in the following chapters a challenger comes and he would fight with the king and kill him in the hopes of becoming king of the wood himself the work is divided into four main portions or books smaller parts you can say the book one is the king of the wood which takes a look at mysticism, talks about spirituality and the notions of the divine powers in a variety of human cultures. The second book named as Killing the God, which talks about the myths and the ancient stories where gods were murdered and tortured. The third book talks about the scapegoat, which again talks about how gods were sacrificed, but willingly or unwillingly for the good of their people or for the benefit of their people, the gods were sacrificed. And the final book, which is called The Golden Bough, it talks about the concepts of afterlife and the, you know, possibility of uh, moving between this world and the world hereafter or the next world. His overall uh, theory, you can say, talks about the human race that has evolved from from starting from believing in magic and then going to the religious belief and then uh, they also have this sci these scientific thoughts with them as well he talked about how old culture uh, cultures acted in both scientific and uh, religious manners he explains that uh, fraser explains that uh, the priest who was known as the king of the wood he achieved his position by murdering the previous priest king and uh, Fraser wanted to know how and why this practice was established and why priests were particularly called kings in ancient times. Then he talks about um, the pattern of sacrifice uh, that it became necessary for the uh, collective welfare or the, or the well-being of the community or the people that a respected leader has to be killed or he has to make a sacrifice for them. Fraser also talks about the killing of uh, the tree, tree spirit in which there are various figures who are representing winter or death. Um, they were uh, killed and... Uh, in a purpose uh, as a purpose to begin the new life of spring and summer the main themes include uh, uh, the gradual progression from superstitions uh, to uh, grad uh, to uh, progressing to scientific thinking another theme that is there is uh, the search for knowledge because uh, as I already mentioned, Fraser uh, 
like he discussed everything in detail and he has hundreds and thousands of pages filled with a lot many examples from different cultures variety of cultures to explore the myth uh, and um, uh, yeah this like this promotes uh, the search for knowledge another thing is that uh, there is similarity in science and religion people place both the things on opposite ends but he contradicts and he says that they are from the same origin what relation this uh, this uh, this uh, particular work by fraser has with the work of uh, t.s eliot's the wasteland eliot cites the two volumes by fraser that is adonis and atis osiris which uh, which uh, deal with the dying and reviving gods eliot has also used images of fertility and lack of fertility throughout the poem the wasteland and uh, which are like most prominently it can be found in the final section of the poem which we are going to study further but uh fraser how it is re- related to fraser's work fraser has also discussed the ceremonies that were inspired by fertility gods uh, especially the vegetation ceremonies and these ceremonies often include uh, they often included human and animal sacrifices and uh, of course what i uh, mentioned earlier the sacrificial death of the king for the betterment of the people so according to fraser kings were often put to death in order to preserve the vegetation cycle so using the uh, fraserian images of dying and reviving gods t.s eliot uh, sees the need for a kind of like um um uh, what can you say is uh, a sacrificial death for the renewal uh, of the soul of mankind of the spirit and the soul another thing that makes a relation between both the works is the sexual immortality immorality and the sexual impotence which uh, are the themes uh, found in the wasteland also and fraser has also discussed the relationship between sexual immorality um and uh, not only in human fertility but also the fertility of uh, vegetation eliot finds <clears throat> that the, the the essential uh, or the like kind of necessary emotional and spiritual union that has to be there is lacking in the modern uh, sexual uh, practices and sexual appearance this was all from my side thank you Um, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim my name is Amjad Abbas Khan um i have discussed the golden bar by sir james fraser and it's uh, uh elements with the the wasteland so the golden bar a study of comparative religion <clears throat> by sir james fraser it was originally published in two volumes in 1890 with the subtitle a study in comparative religion and was enlarged and published with the subtitle a study in magic and religion this massive work surveys the spiritual beliefs practices and the institutions of cultures worldwide and posits a natural progression from magic to religion to science the golden bough is an interesting book by james fraser that compares and contrasts scientific and religious thoughts with events such as fertility rates and human sacrifice being compared compared with both religiously and scientifically his overall theory being that the human race has evolved from believing in magic going to religious belief and to into transition to scientific thought fraser discuss how old cultures acted in both scientific and religious manners many people place religion and science on the opposite ends of the spectrum but the fraser have believe that this is an incorrect assumption saying that both are from similar religion it means that he is pointing out both religion and science on the same platform but at the same time he explained the different differences between the states of mind have shaped our beliefs that how our mind uh, take those things uh, that how our mind evolve those things to different criterias like uh, different assumptions of science and religion 
Fraser makes the point that our thoughts are ever progressing they are progressing uh, every day and they have that believe that uh, our mind changes uh, towards the things thank you so much